Hey everybody, welcome back to the Old Man Van Running Channel. Been away doing a virtual running challenge. Now I'm back and I'm ready to start posting some more videos. So today I'm going to do, and I'm very excited about this, my very first running shoe review. So, went out to my favorite running shoe store about three and a half weeks ago, and I tried on three different pair from three different brands, all three of which are mild to moderate stability daily trainers. I tried on the On Cloud Flyer, I tried on the Hoka Oni Oni Arahi 5, and I tried on the Saucony Guide 14. Tried all three of them on, walked around a little bit, went out on the sidewalk, jogged a little bit. The pair that felt the best to me in the store on that day was the Saucony Guide 14 Moderate Stability Daily Trainer. When I took this shoe home, right out of the box, I went out on a 13.1 mile or half marathon run, and it was pretty positive. Here's some of my impressions out there on the road. Hey all, I'm two miles in to my Saturday run, and I'm wearing, this is the first run in the Saucony Guide 14s. Stability shoes, moderate stability shoes. So, I'm really impressed so far. Very comfortable, not overbearing support. And I did have to stop a couple of times and adjust the shoelaces to dial in the fit, but did pretty good. And what I'm noticing is, there's a little bit of pep in these shoes. They're not the lightest shoes. They're a daily trainer, but they got a little bit of pop to them. Not much, but a little bit. And my times, my mile times are just under nine minutes a mile, so, and I feel pretty comfortable and relaxed, so. Liking it so far. Hey folks, almost seven miles in to this Saturday run. Got a snowstorm coming up tomorrow, so getting it done today. Let me say, these Saucony Guide 14s are holding up real well. Only thing, like I mentioned a while ago at two miles, is I had to adjust my laces a few times and I've had to do it maybe four times just to get the fit right. Um, I'm wearing very light socks right now and it's just been a little tough to get them dialed in, but beyond that, flexibility's good, traction's great, they don't feel too heavy. Um, and, you know, they got a nice softness to them that's, again, not too squishy, but just enough with some bounce back. Maybe not as soft as my Adrenaline GTS 21s, but I seem to have one more pop in them than those. Okay, so you saw my first impressions out there on the road. Let's talk a little bit about this shoe. I've got about 65 miles on it now, so I've had enough time to do a number of different runs in it, uh, varying distances. So now we can get into the nuts and bolts and you know the meat and potatoes of the Saucony Guide 14. First of all, this colorway, when I bought this shoe, it had just come out. So there were only three colorways. They're all pretty drab. I'm gonna tell you the only one that even came close to being something I wanted to put on my feet was this color. It's a charcoal gray upper, which I don't mind all that bad. It's got some black overlays here, the Saucony logo. It's got this nice fluorescent yellow accent here, and it's got a white uh, midsole. So the contrast there was pretty good. It's got a gray outer sole. So, you know, it was the best I could get at the time. Since then, they've added some pretty exciting colorways. I would get the more kind of neon, red, green, yellow, orange kind of colorway that they, they have now that's pretty cool. So getting into some of the specifics of this shoe. As I said before, this is a moderate stability daily trainer. So it's a shoe for people who need a little bit of structure, have excessive supination, or they pronate a little bit, and they need a shoe that's gonna kind of keep them in line. It's not necessarily for somebody who needs a motion control shoe, so somebody who's got severe overpronation issues, 
but it's definitely a shoe that someone with mild to moderate pronation or some excessive supination can wear and get that stability and get that alignment uh, from the shoe. So this shoe uses Saucony's Power Run midsole material here. Here's what I'll tell you about this midsole material. This shoe has a little bit firmer midsole material than what I would normally get in a daily trainer. Um, I was a little worried that it was gonna be too firm. So if you kind of see, it's, it, you know, it takes a little bit to depress it. And in my Brooks Adrenalines, they have DNA loft midsole material, which is much softer than this. And I was a little bit concerned that this would be too firm. Now with the Power Run midsole material, I talked to you about the firmness. Well, when I took it out from my first run and in my run since, it's pretty smooth out there. It feels like it's got more cushioning than it does when you're trying to depress it with your fingers, although it, again, doesn't approach that of the DNA loft that I have experience with in the Brooks. The shoe felt lighter than it actually is, and this midsole material actually gave a little bit of a pop at toe off. So there was some responsiveness to this midsole, you know, some oomph, some punch to it that I did not expect to be there. So I was pretty happy with that. So that made the shoe feel lighter on the foot and kind of felt like I could pick up the pace a little bit. And I looked down at my watch and I was actually running faster uh, per mile times than I thought I was for the effort I was putting out. Okay, let's look at the stability features on the Saucony Guide 14. Couple of things. You have the TPU guidance frame, which is an L-shaped block of thermoplastic polyurethane, which runs on the medial side of the shoe, under your heel and your arch area. As you can see on the medial side of the shoe, you see this gray material here, very, very hard to depress with my finger. That is very solid, looks like a classic medial post that you would see on a motion control shoe or a classic stability shoe. Here you can also see this TPU material under the medial side arch area of the outsole. What this TPU guidance frame does is when your foot strikes and your arch wants to collapse in, that firm material keeps that from happening and keeps your foot aligned, which is the goal of a stability shoe. Some more stability features. Looking at the upper, you have these 3D overlays that just give some structure and helps that midfoot in the upper kind of mold and hug your foot. Looking at the heel, you've got a very, very firm heel counter, which helps keep your foot locked in and helps your heel from moving around side to side too much. You've got a wide base here, beveled midsole to the outside where people normally heel strike, especially if you're a pronator, most pronators do heel strike. So that area right there is beveled. It takes away some of the force when you're hitting the ground. And if you're a heel striker, that's normally where you get most of the force. What I am finding as an added benefit is after 60 plus miles, Right here, almost no wear in the outsole. That's telling me that this shoe, as long as the midsole holds up, should get excellent life and should last a, a long, long time. Moving to the insole, you've got the form fit system, the form fit sock liner that Saucony uses in many of their shoes. Basically what it does is it adapts to your foot as you run in it. So eventually, only you can wear this pair of shoes. So those are the stability features of the Saucony Guide 14. All right, some of the other things about this shoe that I like. First of all, the upper, it is a flexible, very soft engineered mesh, molded around my feet really well, allowed my toes to splay naturally, which was good. There is a little more material in here than I normally have, although I do believe the shoe is true to size. If you look at the collar um, around the ankle and around the heel, 
Very, very well padded and comfortable. A nice flare at the top of the heel collar to protect your Achilles from maybe blisters or rubbing too much. That was really, really comfortable. I liked it. You look at the well padded tongue. It is gusseted, so it won't move around from side to side. Once it's in place, it stays. You've got flexible, thick, rounded laces. Did cause me a bit of a problem on my first run. Had to stop a number of times to adjust the laces to get a proper lockdown. Once I did that, got used to it. Not my favorite laces, but hey, they do the job. So overall, very comfortable. I like that form fit system. Again, it seems to form to your foot and get used to you. Um, and gets more comfortable as you go. So let's go over the numbers. So this shoe, the Saucony Guide 14, has an eight millimeter heel to toe drop. So that's eight millimeters higher in the heel, midsole, than in the forefoot. Stack height is 32.5 millimeters in the heel, minus the eight millimeters for the drop, gives you 24.5 millimeters in the forefoot. Not anywhere near what the max stack height shoes are these days, the maximalist shoes like the Hoka's, but still enough to provide plenty of cushioning in both the heel and the forefoot. Talking about the weight on this shoe, this is 10.5 ounces in a men's size nine. Typical weight for a daily trainer. It's not on the heavy side, it's also not on the light side, but I can tell you the shoe feels lighter on the foot and I think that's because of the firm midsole material and a little bit of responsiveness and pop in that midsole material as well. So feels lighter on foot, can pick up the pace in it. I think it's pretty versatile because of that, but you know, it's not the lightest shoe out there. So that brings me to my ratings, my inaugural shoe review ratings. Where would I rate the Saucony Guide 14 Moderate Stability Daily Trainer? I'm gonna give this shoe, after 65 plus miles, a score of 8.5 out of 10. Why 8.5 out of 10? Here's why. After my inaugural run with these shoes, right out of the box, I did a half marathon, I would have given this, this model a nine to a nine and a half on a 10 point scale. Why did I knock it down a little bit? Well, I've taken this shoe out on some other long runs up to 15 miles. And on my 15 mile run, mile 14 and mile 15, my legs started to feel beat up. That's why I'm taking it down a peg because I don't feel that the firmness in this midsole is gonna make this a good daily trainer for those longer runs, say half marathon up to 20 miles. I think are gonna to be tough on people's legs. And for me, I'm gonna be looking for a shoe with more cushioning for those longer runs. So that's why I'm taking uh, this shoe from a nine or a nine and a half down to an eight and a half. That doesn't mean this is not a great shoe and a shoe that many, many people can use and be very happy with. I think it's a versatile shoe. I think it's a shoe, if this is the only one you have as your daily trainer, you can get short runs, your recovery runs, you can get all the way up to, like I said, like a half marathon, and I think you'd be fine with this. And I think you can actually take this up a notch in pace and maybe do a, a, a tempo type run in this shoe. It's not a shoe I would take out on the track. It's not a shoe I would do a threshold run or a 5K race or even a 10K race, but I think as a daily trainer, it's got some versatility. So if you don't wanna have 13 pairs of shoes like I have, this might be a good shoe to pair with a, a, a racing shoe and maybe a trail shoe for trail running. So that's my first shoe review. Thanks everybody for watching. If you're looking at me now, you got to the end of this video, which I think it really says a lot. So if you like this video and found it valuable, please hit the like button below and the thumbs down is because it's down there, not because you're giving me a thumbs down. And why don't you subscribe? If you subscribe, when I do more shoe reviews, which I do have more to come, you'll get notified. You'll be able to see more videos as I post them on this channel. Again, thank you very much. And remember, 
Lace up your shoes and let's get out on the roads.